OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So this is about the newly updated advanced ESL online course. And I'm Francisca Wentworth, and I'm one of the OTAN subject matter experts. So a little bit of uh, information before we get too far. Um, I know you all want to figure out how am I going to get a copy of this course. So uh, Canvas now has, there's Canvas Commons, but there's an area in Canvas dedicated to California adult education courses. And that's where you can get a copy of um, OTAN shared courses, which includes this one, and then other courses that agencies throughout California um, share or have shared. And then, um, I don't know, my mouse isn't moving forward here. There we go. All right, so there are a couple of situations regarding your Canvas instance that impact how the course functions. So there's a paid Canvas account through your agency is required. And this could be in two ways. It could be through Canvas Distance Learning Cooperative, CDLC, or through your district, or also on its own. So this course has a lot of activities that are non-native to Canvas. And these are H5P activities and also Learn360. So your Canvas administrator would need to work with OTAN to make sure that these activities work in your course. And then there's another situation here. There's You can get a free for teacher Canvas account. And these courses will work, but the activities won't because they aren't free and they aren't part of the free for teacher account, um, Canvas accounts. All right, so just a little background about me. So I'm an OTAN SME. Um, I've been in adult education since 1987 and worked with OTAN as a coach and course designer in, starting in 2005. So I was in the first uh, TMAC cohort and to, from 2004 to 2006, and then became, we've had different names, but a mentor, support mentor in 2005. And so I mentored people in TMAC, what was OTAC, and later they combined those two into DLAC. What do we think? Did somebody have a? Okay, anyway, um, all right. So I taught ESL at all levels for a long time, for 32 years and developed two Moodle online ESL courses for OTAN. And these are now in Canvas. And that's the advanced ESL, which we're looking at today. And then the writing course, The Right Stuff, which I'll be presenting on next week. And I was director of Jefferson Adult School in Daly City um, from 2016 to 2020. And as luck would have it, retired about two months, January 2020, just before pandemic hit. And I didn't know. I promise. Um, so a little intro into the advanced course. As I said, it was originally in Moodle and it was created originally in 2010 um, as an advanced course for adult education students. So it's really uh, de designed for high intermediate to advanced level English learners. And when it moved into Canvas, it, um, I had to update content because 2010 was a while ago. And so I, there's new content and new activities. So you can use this course either as part of a distance learning program as a standalone course, or it could also be as part of your class as a hybrid or blended learning course. So what we're looking at today, I'm going to give you here in the, a brief overview of how the course is structured and the kinds of learning activities, and then we'll go online and, and I'll walk you through the actual course. It's topic-based and there are 18 topics and language competencies and interactive practice are built into those 18 topics. So it covers uh, language learning competencies. So there's grammar and sentence structure, vocabulary building and practice, listening and comprehension skills. Um, there are a lot of videos. Um, reading activities, writing, and speaking. And then the topics, uh, it covers goals, uh, personal information goals, family, family relationships, famous people, places, government, nutrition, health, illness, emergencies, shopping, consumer awareness, technology, careers, housing, finances, and environment. So those are the topics that are covered. 
So what I'm going to do now is take you to the actual course. So I'm going to stop share and reshare because I don't think I can jump from one to the other. And then let me reshare. And go straight to where it is. Here we go. Okay. So this is the course. Um, the first thing I want to show you before I show you this course is where you would go to get it when you want to um, import it into your own instance. So if you go all the way to the very far left uh, menu here, um, you can click on Commons. And then it's going to take a second. We've got too many things open here. Hold on a second. All right. So once this opens up, you want to just filter. So click on Filter. And then scroll all the way down here, and you'll see the California Adult Education Canvas Commons. So you just click on that, and then you'll see the courses that are in the Adult Education Commons area. So here you can see Advanced ESL. So if you wanted this course, you would just click on this. And of course, I'm not going to do it, but then you've got an import uh, button here. And then you would just follow those instructions. And if you have trouble, um, you can always contact OTAN and the Canvas support, which is a link you will see at the end of the PowerPoint when we go back to look at it. All right, so now I'm going to go to the actual course. And what I'm showing you is the master course. Of course, yours won't say master, but your copy will just say advanced DSL. All right, so this is the home page. And that's what students would first see when they log into the course. And you can, of course, edit. As a teacher, you've got editing privileges. So the first thing you'll want to do is put your own welcome message, right? So this is just a, a placeholder. And then the template comes with this navigation tip. You can leave this here if you like. Again, you're free to edit it. If you feel like this is too complicated for students, you can remove it if you want to. And then there's a brief course overview here and just the general competencies that are covered in the course. And at the bottom here, you also have quick links. The all, these all actually also go into the modules, but learning modules, if you click this, it's the same as clicking modules over here. There's a class resources page that is also in the modules and a teacher contact. So we'll look at that later, but this is just a quick link if students wanted to go directly to any of these items. So over here, we'll look at the syllabus. I'm just going to walk you down here a little bit. So the syllabus at the top here, there is a note here. Please remove this section before you publish your course. So this is information for you, and this is also part of the the course template that comes with the template, but you'll want to remove this before publishing it for students. But I left it here because there are some resources that might be useful for you to look at. And again, if you want to remove it, just click edit and remove. And then below that, what would be left would be a description of the course, learning outcomes. So this is the competencies and what uh, learning outcomes, what students should be able to do. So listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Uh, course materials, this you can edit as well. It has textbook. You might, if you have a core textbook, you might want to put it there. This book class page, this is part of what came with the template. I left it there. If you don't want that there and it's not relevant, of course, you can remove it. Supplemental materials, I did put in here a good headset with a microphone, like what I'm using today works much better, especially with the speaking activities. I teach that uh, I teach in Canvas and other course for another college. And when people don't use, if they just use their computer microphone or even some of the little uh, microphones that come with their cell phones, sometimes it's very hard to hear them clearly. So I always recommend this is something that students should have. And then there's attendance uh, requirements and some basic tech skills that they should have, a section on integrity and student conduct. So this is really about netiquette and some of the things to know about netiquette that students should know. Okay, and then announcements right now, there's just a placeholder here, but this is where you would make announcements for your students. You'd be de deleting this one. This is really just a sample 
this just there as a placeholder. And then, you know, if you want to make your own announcement, you can edit, delete it here, and then add your own announcement up here. All right, so now we're going to look at the modules. And so it does start off with this section only for instructors. And this is hidden, so students um, wouldn't see this part. It's taking a little while to load the whole thing. But um, anyway, so it has some information for teachers here. So this is about videos. There are several videos in this course, and some units have maybe more than you want, and you're all, you can always hide them. All right, and all, to hide something, you would just click, for example, this is not hidden because you've got a green check mark. If I clicked on it, I could hide it. So that way, maybe you don't want students to, you know, it's your course, so you'll be able to adjust as, as you want, adjust it as you want. Then there's just a reference document about the course. This is roughly what we've already looked at, but it gives you the background and what competencies are covered and so on. There's some licensing information. And then um, a note about H5P and Learn360, and I will click on this for a second so you can see. This um, just explains these activities. And if for some reason it's not working in your instance, then you can come here and this is your uh, email for support that can help you uh, get that working. All right. So that's the intro just for teachers, instructors only. It has, tells you do not publish. So now I, what I'd like to do is go into student view and then show you uh, the course moving forward. So let me click on that. It is a little pokey on my computer. I don't know, hopefully it's not gonna be like this for everybody, but um, it just takes a while for it to load and you're gonna watch it up here and when you see the little canvas icon, it's done. There we go. So this is, so when you're in student view, if you haven't done this before, you'll get this pink outline and it'll tell you right down here that you're in student view. So you can see that section on the instructor is gone now because we had it hidden. So the students would start here. Welcome to your advanced ESL course. There's a page about your instructor. So this is somewhere that you can, I'm going to go ahead and click on that for a second. So this is something you would edit, put your own photo, a little background about yourself, your contact information, if there's a phone number and so on, anything that, um, if you have a website, you could put it. If you don't have a website or put your school website, whatever is appropriate there. And you can edit it if you don't wanna have that there at all or like additional contact information, you can always just delete those items when you're editing it. And then there's a course overview, which is very similar to the syllabus. Again, there's this first section you'll want to remove. You can keep the photo, but remove the, um, this information. And then this is really a repeat of what we just looked at in the syllabus. And then the only thing that's different here is um, a grading scheme if you want to have that there. So I just added it there just in case. And then the course, each unit in this course has its own glossary or vocabulary. So um, this course master glossary is all the words in this course. And the reason to have this here was if students um, have a word that they were thinking about or remembering, oh, where was that word? They don't have to look, try to figure out which unit it was in. They can just come here because these are all alphabetically listed. So that would make it a little easier for them to find a word. And then related to that, they can um, build their own uh, dictionary. So this is allows students to edit. And here they can uh, use this space to make a list of new words that they've learned. So this is a, for the students to do that. Okay, I'll go back to the modules. So that's in all this first section. And then the next section is about um, students' instructions for using the course. So there is a, um, a Canvas resource that they can go to to help them uh, how to use the course. There's an Ask the Teacher. This is a discussion forum. This is something, and I'll show you this a little bit. This is something that you would um, 
it's a space for students to ask general questions and it's it's public so that they, they need to know that whatever they ask their other students would see it as well but it's the goal is if they have a grammar question a lot of other students might have the same question and that way the teacher can answer that question in a in an open forum and then there is a note if they have some specific question that's more personal to contact you directly so you would need to post your email address right here so that they can contact you directly and then then there's also some tech requirements just talks about what kind of browsers uh, computer uh, things that they would need um, in terms of browsers I have found, this is when my other teaching job, that actually Chrome and Firefox work the best. There have been some issues with Safari and sometimes with Edge, so just so you know. And then I put instructions on how to do these different assignments, so I'll show you these for a second. So that students know, so when, they, when there's a writing assignment, and all the writing assignments will have a pencil icon so that you know it's a writing assignment. And then just so that what they know what the buttons look like, start assignment, then they write their assignment in the little uh, text box that opens and then submit their assignment. So that's what it looks like. And then there are instructions on how to post in a discussion because it's all a little bit different. So in the discussion, they need to select reply. And then in this course, this is what I put here, that they're required to respond to two of their classmates um, after writing their own post. There's also a video here on how to uh, post in a discussion. And then similar, how to record a speaking assignment. So, so the discussions have the little person icon and the speakings have this little speech bubble. And so here's also a video on how to post in a speaking assignment and also a document that explains it step by step. And then in speaking assignments, I also have the instructions written out. So they're pretty covered in how to do that. And once they do it the first time, it's fairly straightforward. And then here's the class resources page I mentioned. This links from the front page as well. And this is, this is something you can edit. I put a few things here, but certainly yeah, you'll want to remove this to the teacher note and then add whatever you want to add here. So all I've really done is listed irregular verbs and put a couple of dictionaries, online dictionary options here, but you can add to this and put your own resource materials. Okay, so that's the student instructions section. And then there's a pre-unit. So the pre-unit has, um, so these little icons are Canvas quizzes. If you see the little rocket ship, it's, an, it's a Canvas quiz. So there's a pre-test and just a general grammar test just to get an idea of what level students are. It's not, it's not graded. These are just practice uh, tests. And then there's a basic computer vocabulary. This is part of the pre-unit, some basic, uh, a quiz based on that. This is a H5P quiz, an H5P quiz, so let me show you that for a second. And when students come in here, it says an external tool, so they'll see right away, that, and you'll see that it's an external tool, so because it's going out to H5P. So this is just one of the types of activities, just a drag and drop. So I can't find, here it is. So then this one, you know, every time you open this, the order is going to change. And if you do it too fast, it will jump back. So let students know if it doesn't work, keep trying. And so then they just, you know, drag and drop into the correct definition here and then click submit. And then they will see their answers and which ones they were correct and which ones weren't. And then there's a listening. Um, this is a reading and a listening about computer and technology. So they would uh, listen to this and then they can read it here too. And then there's a quiz based on that. So let me go back to the modules. So the pre-unit is really just about computer terms that they might need to know. 
And then there's a quiz here for that. All right, so now I just wanna walk you through, all the units are structured in a similar way. So unit one is on this topic, goals and personal information. There's an introduction and all the, um, all the units have this introduction that just basically tells them what they're going to be learning in this particular unit. And then from there is their, the vocabulary. So this is the first group, word forms group one and then vocabulary in this unit. And all the glossaries um, are built in, a, in the same way. So you have the word and then as a verb. And I did put in the first glossary what these uh, abbreviations mean. And then they can listen to uh, the pronunciation. And also I end up reading pretty much what's up here with the example. So all of them are like that. So you have the, the words, definition, the different forms, and then uh, the pronunciation and me reading the pronunciation of all these plus the examples. So they can follow all that. And then uh, I'm going to go back to the modules because there are several activities. Let it load, 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 load. All right, so the vocabulary is here, the glossary, and then followed by various practice activities. So each unit has a Quizlet section where they can practice uh, the vocabulary. And then word forms, this is H5P, and then a dictation, also H5P, and then a Canvas quiz, all related to the vocabulary. So I'm going to just show you, this is a, a uh, fill in the blank type of activity in H5P. So it has a hint. So students can look at the hint and then type the word, which in this case is obey. And they fill it all in and then submit. So that's uh, one type. And then uh, the units all have a dictation. So this is also a dictation with the word forms. So the sentences I read that once at normal speed and then in slower speed and then again once at normal speed so they actually hear it three times and then they can write in their answers and submit I do put a note here don't forget punctuation because if they forget to put the period it might mark them wrong so they need to remember to do that and then this is a quiz uh, in Canvas, and there's your little rocket ship. And this one, they were just, um, I'll just show you what it looks like. And there are different types of quizzes in here, but this is just a fill in. So they just need to fill in the word, and then when they're finished, all the end, they submit. And there are instructions when they open it up, you know, take the quiz and then submit, but they need to do that. Okay, and go back to the modules. Okay, so we're not uh, taking the quiz, so move away from there. I gotta wait for it to load again before I can move on here. All right, so then after the whole vocabulary section, then there's uh, their assignments. So here's a little survey of why they're studying English. And then there's a video interview about a musician, guitarist and the life of a musician and then a quiz related to that video. So all the videos will have the video and then a quiz related to it that are in this course. And then after the assignment section, there's grammar. So we're starting with the regular verbs. There's a past tense quiz. This is H5P. Uh, they just have to write the past tense form. And then there's a quiz in Canvas and then some sentence writing. So the sentence writing, in this case, it's a quiz. There are other assignments that involve writing, and these do need to be graded by the teacher. So for this one, they need to, they're provided with one of the words in the vocabulary, and then with the word forms, and then they need to write a sentence with it. And all the quizzes in this course, with the exception of the tests at the end, are practice quizzes. And what that means is students can, uh, do them just for practice, but they don't report into the gradebook. 
So that's something you need to think about. If you want them reported to the grade book, you would need to change them to graded quizzes. And if you need me to show you later, I can show you how to do that. But um, just so you know that most of them are practice. And then here's the discussion section. And there are two discussion topics in this particular unit and two speaking topics. And then each unit has, these are the graded tests. So there's a sentence writing test and this is one the teacher needs to grade. So they're writing sentences with the vocabulary provided. And then this is uh, self uh, auto graded and it's a combination of fill in and multiple choice. All right, so then that's unit one. So then second unit is about family relationships. Again, an introduction, word forms group two, Quizlet, um, H5P activities, same uh, word forms group one. This had the same thing. Group two is also a fill in the word and then a dictation and then a quiz, a Canvas quiz. And then here there are more videos. Number one was a little bit light, but we're adding more here. So the assignment section, there's a video on family values and types of child rearing. And then a quiz related to that video, a reading about a family, American family uh, structures, and a quiz, a video about technology and relationships, how it affects relationships, and a quiz on that. And then the poem by Robert Louis Stevenson, Bed in Summer, so they get to listen to the poem. And then here there's a dictation on, a, on, on the poem, kind of a line by line dictation. And then the grammar in this section is on will versus going to, and an H5P quiz, and then a Canvas quiz, and then writing. So the writing assignments, I'll just show you this one for a second. So they're writing about their own family. This is a teacher graded assignment. So it'll just give them an, some information, write 10 sentences in paragraph form. And these are the topics in, that they should be covering. And then all of the writing assignments um, have a rubric. And so the rubrics are is the same for all writing assignments in this course, and they're all worth 50 points. And just a little aside, if you're wondering why these lines don't like line up, we tried, but this is a canvas issue. You can't you can't line them up straight. So if that bothers anybody, it bothers me because I like things straight, but it's not anything you can control. So don't worry about it. But just thought I'd mention that in case somebody thinks, why aren't these lined up straight? All right, it needs to load again here. Okay, unit two. All right, so then there's an, another description where they're writing about, a, it's a picture and they have to write a description of the picture and then discussion about their family, speaking assignments here, and then their unit test. So then number three is people and biographies. So same thing, it starts with an introduction that tells them what's going to be covered in the court in this unit. Um, now we're on word forms group three, Quizlet, and same a quiz and dictation, and then a, the Canvas quiz. So this course, just so you know, is is designed to be sequential, especially the grammar is sequential and the vocabulary is sequential. So there is a way, um, I can show this later if you need me to, there is a way that you can set it up so that a student um, can't move on to unit three, for example, until they've completed unit one or two and two. So you can set it up that way. I didn't because otherwise you, I couldn't show you this in student view, but um, that is an option you have if you want to control, uh, you know, not let students do unit 18 before they've done unit one, for example. And it is individual. That was something in Moodle you couldn't really do. And it's nice in Canvas because if, I, if you set it up with prerequisites, it's individual as opposed, so some students are going to move faster than others. Some students are going to join the class later than others and so on. So then in three, we're looking at people and biographies and then, you know, vocabulary, same setup. Assignments, this is about Ray Charles. So there are a couple of readings. There's some introduction. There's a, 
a video. And this is just listening to uh, one of his songs, one of a pretty famous song. And then there are two readings. And these come from Voice of America. So there's no audio on these two, but there's a reading and then a quiz on part one, so learning about his life, and then reading part two and a quiz on that. And then there's a little video about Ernest Hemingway and a quiz on that video, and then a dictation on a few lines from A Farewell to Arms. And that's an H5P activity. And then a video about Vincent van Gogh, and then a quiz related to that. And then the grammar section this, in this unit is present perfect. And they'll, there's an H5P activity in practicing the present perfect and also a Canvas quiz and another H5P activity where they have to put the words in the correct order. Um, so the question word order, how to do question word order with present perfect. And then a little uh, information about conjunctions and writing using conjunctions and then describing a person in writing. And then discussion, who's your favorite singer in your country? Who do you admire? And then they can speak about their favorite singer or musician. And then just to practice present perfect, what have they done since last month? And then your unit test. So then uh, unit four, cities and countries and places. Again, you've got your introduction, and this is the beginning of the advanced vocabulary list. So this is the act academic vocabulary list, and this is group one. So there's six of these, and they're all in this course. Um, spaced apart a little bit by other things, but they're all in here. And then Quizlet, and again, some practice with the vocabulary. And then here's another, uh, another H5P activity added here, and that's the crossword which I think is kind of cool because I love crossword puzzles. So here they just need to, um, they can just type directly in here if they want to. You know, if you type in there, it'll lighten, lighten up, light up uh, which number you're on. So if I wanted to do seven down, you know, if I scroll down, it's going to highlight seven. All right, so you would just, students would just type in here, you know, put their cursor right at the front there and then type the word. And so if they write that, write that in and then just fill the whole thing in and then they can submit their answers. It does have a show the solution option and that's just comes with the way it's built. But so they can submit their answers, show the solution, they can try it again. And these are all just for practice and for fun. All right, so this next part, is a video about uh, building the Golden Gate Bridge, and then there'll be a quiz on here. And all of these that that are you can open in YouTube, I put a note in here that they can click on the CC for closed caption, and they also can slow the speed. So this little note is on all the videos that uh, will open up in YouTube so that they know they have that option. Okay, I was going to say just, so we're on four, sorry for the scrolling here, but there's no other way to get down here. All right, so then um, after they do the building the Golden Gate Bridge, there's a dictation on, I left my heart in San Francisco and, you know, Tony Bennett just died recently. So it's a, <laughs> yeah, a little sad. But anyway, um, what they do is they listen to the song and then they have to fill in a blank. You know, it's like a close exercise um, with the words of the song. And then they have a little writing about a famous landmark, which could be anywhere in their country, any, any landmark they know about. And then some various videos. There's one about the Afghan girl from that famous photo, that National Geographic photo that most of you are probably familiar with. And then there's the uh, quiz that goes with along with that video. There's a video about the Bermuda Triangle and the disappearance of some planes many years ago. And a quiz, and then the Terracotta Warriors in China, and quiz. And then the grammar lesson in this unit is about present perfect uh, versus simple past. And here's an H5P exercise on that. 
and then a Canvas quiz. And then discussion, what country would you like to visit? Um, discussion about your favorite vacation and then speaking about where you'd like to go on vacation and then the unit tests. And then in unit five, we're talking about government rules and laws. So again, the introduction. Here we've got the advanced vocabulary list group two and Quizlet and the different activities. There's a crossword in this one as well. And then there's also a vocabulary, this is another type, different type of uh, H5P activity I'll show you. That's also in various activities in this course. So this is just, they just need to choose the correct answer here. And they click this, it'll ding, and then it goes on to the next one and so on. All right, so they just click and it's like that. So that's another type of H5P activity. which is wonderful to have in this course because H5P is pretty cool, I think. There's, there are a lot, of, a lot of different types of things you can do, types of quizzes. I only use certain ones for this level, but there are many, many activities, many types of quizzes you can make in H5P. Okay, so government rules and laws, sorry. So here they're, um, I'll move down a little bit. So the assignments here, there's a, a reading and listening about Susan B. Anthony, and then a quiz on that, and then a little writing about what they learned from, from reading about, uh, reading and listening about Susan B. Anthony. Uh, Martin Luther King, um, his last speech, a quiz on that, uh, a short dictation from his I Have a Dream speech, and then a video on human rights in Canada, and then also a quiz related to that. And then the grammar here is past progressive, and then a quiz on that. And then some discussion about kind of government in their country, and then they, speaking about the same topic. So they can discuss it and then practice speaking about it. And then the unit test. And then on six, we start on food. So in this unit, we're starting with phrasal verbs, list one. And there are two glossaries, so one dedicated to the phrasal verbs and then one having to do with food and cooking terms. So these I just made separate glossaries. And then again, you've got Quizlet. The Quizlet is focused on the phrasal verbs and exercise on phrasal verbs, dictation, and then vocabulary practice that has more to do with food and cooking terms. And this one as well, crossword. And then a writing about diets. So what they know about diets, there's a dictation on organic foods and then video on how French camembert is made uh, with a quiz and then the story of McDonald's and a quiz related to that. And then grammar on this one, past progressive and simple past and then a quiz, canvas quiz, discussion, who does the cooking in your house and then talking about diets that they know about so when they go on the speaking, let me just show you one of these. When they go on here, the way it's is I ask a question. And you know, you've got the speech bubble there that shows it's a speaking assignment. So I ask them a question, and then here's where how to record media. So this is the same uh, same in all the activities here with speaking so that they know how to do it. And then also instructions here on how to do it. So they click start assignment. And then this is what they need to, to do in order to uh, record their answers. Okay, so we have to reload. Give it a second until it gets uh, done so that I can move on here. Here we go. Okay. All right, so we're the food, 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 food. All right. All right, so then seven is nutrition and healthy eating. So now we've got the next list of phrasal verbs. And again, there are two glossaries, one for phrasal verbs, one for nutrition vocabulary. So things are divided up here. So there's the Quizlet, phrasal verbs. These are H5P activities. And then there's another exercise, uh, H5P, that has to do with nutrition vocabulary, and then a crossword that has to do with nutrition. 
And here are some, now this is a reading about food and childhood obesity, and then a quiz based on that reading, a video about diabetes, a quiz based on that, obesity in the United States, quiz based on that, healthy food choices, and a quiz based on that. And then there's a short reading about um, a theory that healthy diets could prevent violence. So here they need to uh, read the reading and then um, put their own opinion, write their own opinion about, about that, what they think about it. And then the grammar here is used to versus to be used to, and a quiz related to that, discussion about what a healthy diet is in their country, and then speaking about how, um, how they stay healthy, what do they do to stay healthy, and then your unit tests. And then this is more about health, how to stay healthy. Now we've got um, advanced vocabulary list group three. Okay, and, and more uh, activities. These are all H5P activities. So any of the, vo under vocabulary, any of these, this is the assignments icon, right? If I click on there, it says it's assignment. But anything under vocabulary that says assignment, it's all going to be H5P if they look like that. Remember, and if they have the rocket ship, then it's a Canvas uh, quiz. So here's um, writing a writing assignment. This is a video um, about Canada versus US uh, health insurance. This is actually not so new, but there was a woman from Canada that came and talked to Congress uh, several years ago. So this is about that. And, and obviously the, the, the theme is still relevant today. And then, so this is just a writing assignment. And then this is how sugar affects the brain, a video and a quiz on that, health benefits of laughter and a quiz on that. And then now they're looking at past perfect with a quiz, uh, some discussion about what is a healthy lifestyle and some speaking about going to the doctor, how often do they go to the doctor, and then the unit tests. And then nine is focused more on illness and disease. So here's the next advanced vocabulary list, Quizlet, the H5P activities. This is a mixture of that and also medical terms are in, inserted into this glossary, so they're combined. And then under assignments, there's a listening about Helen Keller and a quiz, and then writing about what they learned from uh, listening and reading. There's a listening and reading about Helen Keller here. And then there's a video about a possible link between pesticides and ADHD in children. So they can uh, listen and read about that. And then there's a quiz and then coronavirus, a video about coronavirus and a quiz. And then writing about someone they know who has a disability and then writing research health problems. So this one, I'm going to go here for a second because I did put a little um, disclaimer here because people may not wanna write something that's personal possibly. So they can um, just imagine if they don't know somebody, it just says imagine someone that, that has a disability and what, you know, what their life would be like and what they do and so on. So this is again, teacher graded assignment. And then, uh, I'm gonna wait a second again. If I rush it, it's not gonna help me. <laughs> Patience. All right. So that was nine, we're in nine now. And then the writing research, this takes them out to Medline. So I have them go onto the Medline uh, website and look up some sort of health problem and, and report about it. And so that's what they're doing there in this writing assignment. Again, the writing assignment would be teacher graded. Uh, grammar lesson. So this is uh, present perfect with simple past and past perfect, contrasting those and a quiz. Um, a discussion if they've ever known anyone who had a serious illness. And again, here they can write about something personal if they want to, but if they want to just write about somebody they know or somebody they've heard about on the internet, 
or make something up, they can do that. And then there's a speaking about the disabled where they have a speaking, uh, answering a question that I have posted there. And then unit nine has the unit test, but because it's halfway through the course, there's also a midterm test. That's just a multiple choice and fill in the blank type of test that they that covers what's uh, vocabulary mostly that's been covered so far. And then unit 10, we're looking at emergencies and disasters. So sim similar structure, there's the introduction, uh, two different glossaries, one with phrasal verbs group three, and then emergency and disasters vocabulary, Quizlet. And then these various activities, again, H5P quizzes, and then a campus quiz. And then the assignments here, this is uh, warnings for heart attack and a quiz. There's a dictation about heart attack where they can do that. Um, a video about doctors without borders and then a quiz and then a writing about a fire. Uh, they have to describe what happened um, from, a, from a photo. So that's a, a writing assignment. Then reported an indirect speech and a quiz on that. Discussion, have they ever called 911? And a description of what happened or if they know anybody else who's called 911 and they can write about that. And then speaking related to emergencies and disasters. And then there are tests. And then 11 is clothes and shopping. And here we've got other advanced list group five and shopping vocabulary. These are in one glossary here. Quizlet, H5P activities. You've also got this crossword here. And then some assignments. There's a listening having to do with Black Friday. And what is it? And a quiz. And then they need to answer some questions about shopping. And then write some sentences with the vocabulary words. And then now we're looking at real conditional and the quiz. And a quiz uh, in H5P on the conditional. And then to write questions. This is actually, um, they're giving, well, I'll, let me open it. But it always means I got to reload here where they just, in here, they would just choose these words and write 10 questions. And this is teacher graded as well. So if you remember some of those word cloud things, that's what that is. All right. So that was in here. And then just a discussion, where do they generally shop for clothes? And then a speaking about going shopping. And then 12 is consumer awareness. So there's vocabulary related to that, Quizlet, and then other H5P activities related to consumer awareness vocabulary. Um, danger of counterfeit drugs. This has a part one and part two. It's a listening um, and reading activity and the quizzes related to each of those. And then comparing prices online, this is where they can go online and look for something and do some price comparison, just to learn how to do that. And then now we're looking at unreal conditional in the present and the future and a quiz on that. And then discussion, have you ever bought something with a problem? And this is, you know, what did you do? And then what kind of shopper are you? So, you know, we, there's vocabulary in here about being an impulse shopper or someone who carefully reviews things before they buy anything, that type of thing. And then the tests. And then moving right along, 13 is computers and technology. So there's vocabulary related to computers and tech here. Quizlet and H5P activities writing, what kind of technology do you use the most? Um, this is a video about video games that support democracy and conflict resolution. And a, this is a, a video, uh, listening in a video. And then a, a Canvas quiz. Uh, writing, this is about educational technology. And there's a video in here that they look at and then they write about that. And then this is also another video about how computers have changed how we think, and then a quiz. 
and grammar in this unit is about hope versus wish and a quiz discussion, you know, what you use your computer for, and then speaking. You know, so they, sometimes these are going to be similar answers, but this gives them an opportunity to speak about whatever they wrote here. And then the, then the tests. And then unit 14 and 15 have to do with occupations and careers. So this is occupations. This is another phrasal list for combined here with word forms and some job unit vocabulary for unit 14. And your Quizlet and H5P quizzes and the Canvas quiz. And then videos here, this is a manager at Target. So they watch the video and do the quiz, restaurant manager, other job with a quiz. Um, this is an entrepreneur video. This is actually a writing assignment embedded into this. And this is from Learn360. So there are just a few Learn360 videos in this course, and this is one of them. And then I put in here the Holland Code assessment. So students can take this assessment and then share their results in here. So this might take a little bit of you know teacher help on how to do this, but I thought it would be interesting and then students can kind of get an idea of what types of jobs uh, they're uh, suited for, what their personality, basically what they're suited for. And then there's a writing a career exploration. So on this one, they're going to go on ONET and look up a job that they find interesting and they need to write about that. And then a, a writing about what their dream job would be. And then grammar here is modals of advice and regret. And then a quiz on that. Discussion, what do they want to do uh, as a job, as a career? And then they speak about that as well. And speak about a career interest that they find interesting. 